So welcome everyone to the Search and Discoverability, uh, aka Metadata Panel. My name is Marisa Demelio. I'm from the DAISY Consortium, and I'm going to be moderating. So during this panel, we're going to talk about metadata and how it impacts accessibility. And I know we just heard a lot about metadata in the uh, stakeholders panel that we all just attended. So we, we see how important it is. Uh, our experts here today are going to give us different perspectives on how metadata is created and consumed, and we'll hear from them as well about best practices and some of the latest developments. So be sure to make a note if you have any questions or comments. Um, the format of this is that we're going to have our panel for 30 minutes, and we're going to hear from our panelists during that time. And then afterwards, we're going to have a long working session during which there's plenty of time for questions, comments, discussion, all that. Um, so with that said, I'm gonna ask our panelists to introduce themselves uh, and let's start with George Kirscher. Hi, my name is George Kirscher with the DAISY Consortium, also with Benetech and just delighted to be here. Uh, next, can I hear from Sarah Falkar? Thanks. Uh, I'm Sarah Feltar. Uh, I'm the head of technology at the West Vancouver Memorial Library, which is in British Columbia. And I work with uh, sort of the back end library systems as well as uh, sort of how they interface with our, our public and our community. Thanks. Uh, and then can we hear from Farah Little? Hi, everyone. I'm Farah. I am the content coordinator at NELS. Thanks. And finally. Hi there, I'm Gregorio. I'm from Italy. Uh, sorry for my uh, Italian accent. Uh, I'm the Chief Accessibility Officer in Fondazione Liga. We certify ebooks, uh, Italian ebooks uh, for accessibility. Great. Thank you so much for that. So I have a series of questions um, to ask you all. And let's start out by looking at what is the role of metadata? And the question here is what accessibility information might a user get from metadata? I think I'd like to start off with Farah. Yeah, so I think basically I like to think of it like the user is going to get information about the accessibility features that the book has or doesn't have. Um, so when accessibility metadata is made public, um, a reader would know if the ebook, for example, has print page, page, uh, print page navigation, or if all of the images in the book are described, um, or if the ebook has a full and functional table of contents, or if they're able to customize the reading display. Uh, so that's the kind of information that a reader would get if the metadata is uh, displayed to them. Um, basically, all the useful stuff that will help them decide if this book uh, meets their needs. And yes, uh, Onyx and schema.org metadata, I'll just say they pretty much cover all the same features. Um, and you can find those feature lists online and we can share, I think we're gonna share some links out too uh, to help you get a sense of like all the accessibility features your ebook might have that you might want to uh, promote to your readers. George, can I see your hand up? Yeah, and, and I'm a blind user. I would want to know if this book would, would work for me. Is it screen reader friendly? That's critical for people who are blind. Definitely so important. Uh, hey, George, any more I, comments? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Am I allowed to ask a question? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the screen reader friendly uh, bit. I've I've seen that um, live on some sites. George, from your perspective, does that mean just that it's machine readable, or does it mean that the content's actually really well structured and you can navigate it uh, using table of contents, headings, uh, page lists, and everything? Like, how how do you view what that means? So the, um, the fundamental principle here is that all the text 
is available in the correct reading order and that images have um, alt text or they are um, described sufficiently with extended descriptions or in the surrounding area so that the entire publication can be consumed textually and uh, that the screen reader can get at essentially all the information that's in the book. And of course, the other features like navigation through the table of contents or direct pay page navigation are other important features, but screen reader friendly means the whole thing is available through a textual presentation and uh, screen readers with their text to speech function can uh, uh, okay. allow you to read the book. Great, thanks. Thanks, George. So our next question is what needs to happen to ensure that metadata is present in eBooks? And George, I was wondering if we could ask you to address this. Well, of the publishers have the responsibility to uh, include the accessibility metadata in their in their EPUB. And uh, they can answer the questions that um, need to be addressed because they know what's what's in their book. And the uh, various features and the uh, hazards, uh, like flashing or motion simulations uh, that could be a problem for some users need to be identified. Um, we just talked about the screen reader friendly and that's addressed in the schema.org metadata for access mode sufficient and access mode sufficient equals textual um, flags that it will be screen reader friendly. The other very, very cool uh, accessibility um, metadata field is um, accessibility summary. And this is a intended to be a human readable description um, uh, prose of what are the features, what are the, whether it's W, um, WCAG AA, does it have a page list that you can navigate, full table of contents, are images described fully, um, does it use MathML, any of these things that will help an end user or a teacher decide that this is a good book to use for their course should be in that accessibility summary. Fortunately, the um, accessibility checker for EPUB ACE when you run that on an EPUB, it uh, pulls out the accessibility metadata, presents it in a tab, and you can just review that accessibility metadata, make sure it's good for you. And with the GUI of the ACE, you could go in and edit that metadata if it was incorrect. Very cool. Uh, any more any more comments from uh, our panelists on ensuring or what needs to happen that, to ensure that metadata is present in ebooks? Yeah, I think I, I might just add to that. Like that, I think the first step is really that um, people need to understand what accessibility means in relation to their ebooks. So, like, they need to know what features does my ebook have that make it accessible or usable. Uh, what features doesn't it have? So the first step really before everything is really understanding the usability of your ebook. And um, yeah, there's a lot of resources online that we can share out that'll help you. And I'll just say that if you're in Canada, you can just contact Nels and we'll help guide you through that too. Um, and then like George mentioned, the second step is actually putting it in your ebook. Um, and ACE by Daisy is a really easy way to do that because you don't have to crack open your ebook and put it in the code. So definitely download ACE if you don't have it. And the ACE tool uh, links to the uh, DAISY knowledge base, which mm -hmm. 
provides guidance. So, um, you know, if there's accessibility errors that are identified, the automatic part, um, they're linked to the knowledge base so you can read what is the best practice there. And it also provides a list of the images and their alt text uh, so that you can review to make sure that this is really meaningful alt text. It's a great tip. I, I love the DAISY knowledge base. I use it myself. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Our, so. our hats tip to, to Matt, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a Canadian who uh, uh, maintains that. He's terrific. So our next question, and uh, I'm going to ask Gregorio to start us off with this one. Our next question is, what needs to happen to ensure that metadata is retained throughout the distribution chain? Yeah. So our expertise in, in Italy uh, is that the supply chain uh, for a digital book is quite long as the supply chain for paper books. So all the actor in the supply chain has to know that accessibility metadata exists and how to manage them. So for example, for distributors and aggregators, mm, there are different platforms. The mark is present in Italy, for example, with a digital. And um, the distributors and aggregators have to be sure to have the, the right uh, fields in their uh, database to, uh, to store the accessibility metadata and also to not strip any metadata from the file itself. Because as you know, there are two different formats for metadata, schema.org in the file and Onyx through the supply chain. So they both need to store and send uh, the Onyx and do not strip any metadata inside the file. But then we have store and e-lending platforms and they have to receive correctly the metadata to interpret them and to display to the end user. And they can decide both to use the metadata in the file or the metadata through the supply chain using, using Onyx. But this, this particular uh, piece of the supply chain is really crucial to be sure that then the end user can get the data because if only one actor of the supply chain doesn't manage uh, the metadata correctly then the end user doesn't get anything about the the information in uh, the, the the information about the accessibility of ebooks and uh, we started creating the metadata and we in Italy, we are distributing the metadata through the supply chain, but only one store displays it right now. We have spoken with uh, big online stores, international online stores, and for them it's really, really difficult to change their systems because they uh, work globally. So they have to change their backend for the whole world to get those data. But I think that with the European Accessibility Act, with uh, the, the promotion of accessibility, in, in Canada, they, they are moving. Here we have Amazon, maybe we can something uh, about it. Because I think that uh, displaying the, the right metadata to the end user is really crucial, but also for content creators, for publishers. If the publisher can display that they are creating accessible books, it is a, 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 marketing, uh, a marketing communication for them. So it is really crucial to have those metadata to the end users. No. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to just add to that that you know some companies ingest uh, a title like Vital Source and Red Shell. Um, so they've actually got that EPUB there where they can crack it open and snatch that metadata out of the out of the file. Um, but if you don't ingest it, then the Onyx metadata uh, externally available through the publisher, is a great way to get uh, the, the same um, accessibility metadata, but in a form that you're used to, because you're used to um, displaying the metadata through the Onyx feed. So one is ingestion and one is through uh, the Onyx feed. So those are two good me mechanisms for this accessibility metadata to percolate through the system. Yeah, 
I'll say like at Nels, like I love it when the ebook itself has the metadata in it because then you know it won't disappear. It's there forever and it'll travel with the book forever. And then and at Nels, we um, extract that data and use it to enhance our mark records. Um, in addition to using the Onyx uh, as well, um, because sometimes publishers just put it in one place and not the other. Um, and they do have a little, can give a little bit different information. So make sure your metadata is in one of those places at, at least. And then um, hopefully the retailers and libraries and distributors can do their part to display that data publicly. So that it's, uh, which is the most important part in the distribution chain. It's required to be there uh, according to the accessibility conformance and discovery specification. So if it's not, it's uh, an accessibility error in the EPUB. And when you run the ACE checker and you see an empty accessibility metadata tab, that would be like, ugh, mm -hmm. you know, not good. Yeah. yeah, and it is required also by the European Accessibility Act by law for all the ebooks sold in uh, in Europe. Okay. Yeah, you guys are ahead of us in Europe. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to some of that influence drifting our way, right? Well, it's already influencing the the publishers who have a global market. They're looking at this very mm -hmm. closely. So our next question is, what are some approaches to displaying metadata? And I'm going to ask Sarah to start us off here. Thanks, Marissa. Um, and Farah just mentioned sort of the mark display. And as a, a public library and most libraries, we're not using sort of the Onyx uh, data at all. Um, we're using something called Mark 21, which is sort of a, a transferring the old card catalogs uh, from ye olden days into something vaguely modern. And um, no one I think who's worked in a public library would say that it's a great format, but it is what we have. It's been in use since the 1960s. So it's hard to move that ship. Um, so we can uh, sort of transfer um, Onyx data into the MARC records, but uh, as a standard, um, Mark is, is quite different. Um, and I think Nels does a really good job. So for us, for displaying, we're not necessarily um, always having the right connectors, uh, especially for smaller libraries. So uh, my library serves a population of only 42,000 people, uh, which is quite different than, say, uh, a really big system like Ottawa or Vancouver or Toronto. Um, which might have the resources. And there's a lot of tiny libraries out there that might not have the, the ability to display things um, easily. Um, they might um, be fully reliant on being provided with sort of public uh, mark records that they can grab from other libraries and borrow it. And you can often see where someone made a mistake, possibly at a big library, and then that just spreads through many other libraries and then is almost impossible to fix later on because once they're in there they're sort of static so we're sort of stuck with a legacy system that that makes things a bit difficult um but if we can we are trying slowly we'll be sort of uh, honestly probably the last piece that will fully modernize out of this entire supply chain uh, by the way, I know that uh, a couple of you sent me things that we could share. So if at any point you'd like me to bring that up, just let me know. Um, so that's really interesting. Uh, and more, more thoughts around some approaches to displaying metadata. So with the Mark issue, um, I, I think Mark now has put in some fields for accessibility, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, two fields actually, and it's pretty new. Um, as in, I think they were, yeah, around ne November 2018. So the 341 and 532. Um, and uh, those are the fields we use at NELS. That's kind of where we stick the, the data. And for displaying the metadata, as Avnish already said in the, in the previous panel, uh, we developed uh, inside the DAISY before and then in the WTC. Uh, guidelines on how to display metadata to end users. 
uh, on the user experience. And I think that is really a great document to start with if mm -hmm. you are looking for a reference. Also, for having a consistent way for end users to get the metadata through the different stores, uh, e lending platforms, and so on. And also to not reinvent the wheel every time you have to display something. Sarah, I'm wondering if you uh, have run across Library Simplified in your uh, career at all. Um, that's a good question. And as a small Canadian library, we've heard of it, but it's not something that's accessible to us. Um, for example, in British Columbia, we have 72 library systems and uh, most of which serve populations under 10,000 people. So anything as large and complex and requiring a huge investment of, of time and, and people um, would be something that would have to be handled on either a national or provincial scale. Well, I just mentioned it because they're um, um, it, really doing a lot in terms of uh, bringing accessibility to uh, public libraries. Um, they're using standards like uh, LCP and Redium, or, you know, Redium and Thorium, assume Thorium to uh, as 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 readers. So uh, and and I, I, they have one uh, location in Canada, which is the Ottawa Public Library, but they don't seem to have actually implemented the um, the Simply E reader. But I, I just mentioned it as a as a direction that uh, Canadian and other libraries should be uh, looking at and i think if you look into it the actual implementation is not that expensive um and they use a, a distribution protocol called opds which is a standard for epub distribution these days and and uh would simplify an awful lot of the uh, sort of distribution uh problems or, or challenges that that uh, uh, that we face. OPDS is right. used in other systems than just just EPUB. Right. right. Um, <clears throat> great. Well, thank you for that. So we've got about eight minutes left in the panel before we switch to a general discussion. And I just want to make sure that we, I'm, you know, I'm going to skip around a little bit in our questions because I want to make sure that we get to this one. Um, and so one question that we hear a lot in accessible publishing is where can I go to find references and resources that will help me learn more about, <clears throat> excuse me, about developing and incorporating metadata. And I was wondering if, if I could ask Farah to start us off with this one and, um, and then I'm sure everyone can chime in. Yeah, sure. Um, I think this has been mentioned a few times uh, as a favorite resource for us. So I'd say Daisy Knowledge Base um, would be a great place to start. They have a section on schema.org tags that explain what's available and what they mean. Um, they have a little section on Onyx tags uh, that also go through the different uh, Onyx tags and what they mean exactly. So I would really recommend checking out the, that website in general, but those two pages um, specific to metadata. Um, I think we also mentioned the uh, UX guide for displaying accessibility metadata that was put together by some folks at the W3C, I think. Um, uh, they have some good suggestions in there. It's a good place. Definitely read it before you embark on any work um, towards exposing that data on your website. Um, yeah, so I'd say those two for sure. Uh, and if you want to go straight to the source and you're feeling a bit adventurous, you could read the EPUB accessibility uh, um, spec. Um, they have a section on there all about accessibility metadata and how it's important for discovery and what's required if you want to meet that standard. And contact NELS if you're in Canada. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're new to eBooks and accessibility. So at NELS, we're happy to like walk you through it, to look at your book, um, explain to you, you know, what features your ebook has um, and how it works and how you can add that data in. So we have a metadata channel in our Slack 
our, our accessible publishing summit Slack. And I think it would be great to drop some of these links in there. Sure. Oh, cool. Um, uh, do we have like a specific no. chat? Sorry. Uh, we have a channel called, it's called Hash Metadata. Oh, in Slack. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to go on there, but yes. <laughs> I haven't joined the Slack channel. I mean, neither yet. <laughs> Another document that I found uh, really useful is the crosswalk, crosswalk between Onyx and uh, schema.org. You can find it mm. online, uh, Googling uh, crosswalk Onyx schema. And it is really helpful if you have to create both metadata, so Onyx and schema, because you have a, quite a one-to-one -one mapping from one uh, format of metadata to another. So. Yeah, for content creators, I think that is quite useful. A little bit cheek. Would this be at accessibilitymetadata.org? Yeah, right. Great. You know, we've got that slide showing uh, vital sources and red shelves. Do you want to display that? that yeah. yeah. Yeah, let me share my screen. Let's see. So I believe that was slide 11 was vital source and 12 was red shelf. So let me just open that and get my screen sharing. Can everybody see that? Yep. Great. Yeah. So what we're looking at here is um, it's a slide from a presentation that George did. Uh, the, the title of the slide is Buying Accessible EPUBs, Vital Source. And what this shows us uh, looks like there's a you know, book cover. Uh, title of the book is about statistics and probability. And it you know tells you the author and the ISBN and things like that. Um, and then George, what, uh, what do you want to highlight the well, accessibility there, features? Yeah, if there's... Uh... If the publisher has provided accessibility metadata, then an accessibility tab shows up. And the Vital Source was the first to present accessibility metadata, and they just, uh, way back when, just displayed the raw schema.org metadata, and it was scary. Uh, that, that really triggered us to write the user experience guide uh, where things like screen reader friendly evolved. Um, and uh, so it will show the most important accessibility metadata, um, whether it's screen reader friendly, any hazards, features, the accessibility summary that the publisher wrote. And then normally there's a link to the full accessibility metadata if you want to um, knock yourself out and and read the raw <laughs> the raw accessibility metadata um, that that would be available as well. And then the next slide. Let me just is... pull that up. I have to unshare my screen and reshare my screen. The new image. Sorry, it's oh you grabbed not it. Okay. Most efficient. Yeah, I just took screen grabs because of the. Right. My computer doesn't like PowerPoints necessarily. So yeah, now we should all be able to see the slide about the Red Shelf metadata display. All good? Yeah, and mm -hmm. the and Red Shelf 2 has uh, used the user experience guide. Um, it's still being finished, but they uh, helped us working on it and gave us comments uh, about it. And we do expect that guide to be completed in the next week or two, I think. And then we'll publish that as a community group uh, note from the W3C. Yeah. One thing I like about what they both did is um, they also show you if the book is certified accessible and by who. So I think that's a good quick way for readers and uh, others to get a sense of the accessibility of the ebook. Right. And, you know, I asked them the question, well, what happens if there's no accessibility metadata available? 
And um, Aaron from Red Shelf said, well, they don't display that tab then. They don't display mm -hmm. anything. Which, you know, I was saying, well, why don't you just say no, no accessibility metadata uh, available from the publisher? And, and that was what they noodled on and discussed internally. And they thought it was not appropriate to kind of shame publishers at, mm -hmm. at this time. Uh, but hopefully more and more the accessibility metadata will be, will be available. Mm -hmm. Can I pick on vital source for a second? Um, I noticed they still do display, George, like you said, that entire list of schema.org metadata. Yeah. Um, when you click on the view all accessibility metadata information, that's where they'll display like a huge long list. Literally, they just took out those schema tags and exposed them to everyone, um, which is good, I guess, because it's public. But in general, I would probably say I'm not a fan of that particular approach, um, just because, like you said, they're not super user friendly or understandable to people outside the industry. So like all those scary words like math ML, display transformability, ARIA, um, might not mean much to like the average person. So I think at NELS, as we're working on how to best display this data to users right now, like I think one of our goals is to make sure yeah, we want to display all those specific accessibility features a book has, just like Vital Source has done, but we want to make sure to use user friendly language. And that's the tricky part. Um, so I look forward to reading the UX guide when it's totally complete again um, to see if there's some more good tips in there. Well, and they did also, the also, good um, stuff at the beginning. It's yeah. just that they exposed that nasty stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like they're, they're the forerunner here. So they've done a great job. Um, one thing that would be important too, I think, is to make those tags searchable um, for readers. So like all those accessibility features to have that as a search filter would be really useful. Ooh, yeah, good idea. Looks like yeah, I would love to search on screen reader friendly in mm. a collection because yeah, yeah. exactly. those are the ones that I could benefit from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. That's our goal at NELS, so we'll see. Bug me in a few months and we'll see what we've come up with. Looks like we have another link in the Slack. Sarah has just shared some slides there, um, which is really a neat uh, way to see another display of metadata. Yeah, Where's that from? Very informative. Um, I shared, George, uh, Sistera, um, some uh, examples of what metadata display looks like in some uh, public libraries using the Biblio Commons interface. So yeah. um, this was an example of a record uh, that we have that's available in print, ebook, and um, a NELS uh, sort of audiobook format and sort of what that looks like. So it's a, a series of screenshots, um, including one of what Mark uh, metadata looks like that you can get publicly. A lot of uh, MARC metadata is not often searchable through library public catalogs, um, even if it is there, if uh, sort of staff know what to look for. Often it's only used by uh, library school students uh, when they're doing research for assignments, um, but uh, a lot of it isn't searchable. It's not always indexed by our um, public catalogs. Um, but we can, as staff, sort of run uh, searches. Oftentimes, uh, we rely on sort of NELS and CELA um, for the most accessible things, since we are often locked into um, various other uh, content distributors, which don't make accessibility metadata available. Yeah, got to push for Biblio Commons to do that, because I know a ton of libraries use Biblio Commons, so be great if they expose that data to readers. Great, well, uh, I think this brings us to a close time-wise on our panel, but of course, you know, the plan is to continue talking about metadata. We have an hour and a half working session just following this. So I'm gonna stop the recording. I just wanna say thank you so much to our panelists. That was really, really interesting, excellent discussion. Um, and if you are able to stick around for the working session, please do. Uh, otherwise, 
just thank you again. And yeah, I'm going to shift from moderator to participant. Um, and that's going to bring us to a close. So thank you so much.